Hey bosses, welcome back to It's All About Her, my cooking show where we interview very interesting women. And today we have a special guest. Of course, he's not a woman, <laughs> uh, woman but he's I was thinking friend. like, what up? <laughs> he's also going to be the chef today, and of course, he's going to be part of the interview because I want everybody to know him. He's Hammond, he works with me and uh, in IRG International Realty Group, and he's actually a chef. For the first time in this cooking show, we have a chef because ah! usually it's just me. <laughs> so Hamlet, um, and of course we are going to have Valeria Krasavina. Um, she's Russian. She <laughs> moved here 13 years ago yes. and she has a very nice story of changing careers and everything. And we are going to um, uh, talk about that with her and with you. But first, Hamlet, the chef. Thank what you. What are you uh, doing for us today? Well, we're gonna create and make two delicious recipes because people love these recipes in particular, they're very trendy. And number one is the tuna tartare. But we wanna do it like Thai style, okay? Right. It's a little bit of tricks and flavors because I really like to enhance the experience when people they're having tuna. Tuna, to be honest, is very plain when you're gonna cook it. Uh, if you're on their diet, it's the best uh, source of protein that you can use. Uh, like, like a tuna steaks and with salad, that's the best. But this time we're gonna do it raw and you know, with a lot of flavor. That's gonna be pretty fast and easy. And the second one, it's ceviche. Okay. But ceviche, you know, people automatically come to their mind is just lemon and spices and cilantro and stuff. Today we wanna do ceviche in a coconut sauce. So it's gonna be like outstanding, a lot of flavors. If you wanna enjoy it, you can make it home, which is the most part and easy to do. I co anything with coconut for me is the best. The best. I love coconut in everything. For me, the best dessert, best everything. And um, if you wanna start where we start the interview, ready to start. Please make be a part of the interview. Also, <laughs> I wanna <laughs> ask anything. Um, <laughs> let's ask. Well, um, Valeria, we were talking before. You came from Russia 13 years ago, yes, and yes. you basically had a change in your career. Yes. Um, what was your career before? How is it now and why did you change? Um, it's like, uh, it's still within the art. I'm a fashion designer. It's just now I do more than just fashion, which I didn't know before, but now I discover that I'm an illustrator as well. So I came 13 years ago. And uh, as I said, I'm a fashion designer. I worked in fashion. Um, I worked for the brand uh, and then I left the brand. Uh, we had a little bit of a conflict and then I couldn't work in fashion for two years. And uh, when this happened, I didn't know what to do because I thought, okay, I'm a fashion designer. What, what else can I do besides fashion? And um, I have a French bulldog and uh, I had this idea for a long time before. I just never had time uh, to carry this um, uh, cartoon character who loves fashion, who is a French Bulldog and wears all these brands and I don't know I did just came at that particular moment and I just started exploring drawing um, and I started posting on Instagram honestly without any idea uh, of what I'm do doing just of, because of pure love you I, did because you like it you like it and you just really love number one your dog yeah exactly 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 and the art yes the art when and, when when was the first time that you remember that you saw yourself in the artistic form? Like, was it from a young age? It was something that you developed over the time? Was in college? How, how did that came to you? I think I was, I, I'm trying to remember sometimes and I think I was just born with it. So like as, as long as I remember myself, I was always like, drawing and we wake up like at six o'clock in the morning to watch the TV, how to draw. And then I was always in art schools. My mom always guided me through putting me in different schools with arts and uh, fashion. Did they incentivize you to, to go that, that route? Uh, yes, 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 and definitely yes. Because my mom is very creative and she's she's been making clothes for me uh, since I was a little girl. And I think that another aspect that added, uh, so I started experimenting with fashion and by the age of 15 I wanted to do this so I went to college and uh, 
yeah, I, I, I always been creative. I think it's I, I, I never had a choice, <laughs> but that choice. You never saw yourself doing anything else. No, no. It's it's very interesting because people sometimes it's how interesting how people have different paths. Some people they spend Correct. more time finding what they love and. For me, it just happened to be that I always knew it, but of course, it's always hard work. It's even if you find it very early, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, not coming to you easy. Like, okay, you're on top. You and do you to... think? Do you think for you, not that the process is easy, but it was easier because it's something that you love and you're, you're not struggling to do that, or it's the same thing for a person that just decided I want to be an artist and I'm gonna dive in. Do you think someone that is self-aware like you are, like it has a, uh, an advantage on that? No, definitely. When you love what you do, when you discover that passion, and uh, because even if you love what you do, it's not easy to achieve certain things and there are going to be obstacles. Uh, but if you love this, you just put all this work. It doesn't feel like work, right. you know, it, it feels... Um, I don't know, it's just part of your life, you know, it's like it's something that you don't you can't picture yourself doing without you just do it and you don't think oh I have to like of course sometimes I'm like there are things of aspect of my job that I'm like oh I have to do but again it's because I love it so much so I I just do it. I enjoy it, yeah. yeah. This is art too. It, it is. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. <laughs> For me it's, it's, a, it's a creation process. Of course. It means a lot of like artistic uh, feelings involved in this like for example what I did what I just did I just diced the tuna because it's the best way to do the tartar like simple when you're gonna cut it fillet like five uh, five millimeters mm -hmm. uh, thick and you're gonna cut it you know in little cubes dice it pretty simple for this and I, and I have a question for you because what you said you know it brought a lot of things to my mind this is simple the first thing that we're going to use I smell this what do you think it is uh, sesame Correct. something oil. oil. <laughs> sesame oil. You want to use sesame nice. oil like a one, two spoons according okay. to your taste. We're going to seal the tuna first of all. Okay? Nice. This is like the best way to uh, seal the tuna. Okay? And then the tuna is going to start absorbing the flavors. Right? The second thing that we're going to add is this. This what is like an oil testing um, soy sauce. Soy sauce? Close, close. Soy, soy something? Warm, warm. <laughs> <laughs> what it is? I, I, it smells <laughs> like soy sauce. Okay, it has. It has soy. I don't know. What is. Basically, it's ponzu sauce. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Ponzu. So you're going to add also like one or two uh, spoon of uh, ponzu sauce just to give that kick of soy to the tuna tartare. Okay. I have another ingredient which is over here. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is a, this is like a tasting of things. It's too strong, right? Yeah, it's really what is that? I have no Daniel, idea. Daniel, you know what is that? I'm 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 a, a little bit with a cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's not an excuse here, okay? No, which basically he's saying he, he doesn't have the nose today. No, I don't. His chef knows. No, it's an oil something or something. Fish? Fish. It's, it's fish. Fish, it's oil? fish oh, sauce. Fish okay. sauce. Fish sauce. Basically, they extract from the skin of the different yeah, type yeah, of fishes. But does they it feel create. fishy? It doesn't, but it's like a, a really concentrated. That's the order that you put matters? Always. Always. That's the order. Because little by little, the tuna is going to be absorbing all these flavors. Okay, so let's mix again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm mixing, I'm going to ask Valeria, <laughs> what are the ingredients that your creativity, when you're, you're doing all these designs and stuff, yeah. they came from? What are those ingredients that you put it on your creations? Um, I think I always imagine the fi a final product that I want and how I want, uh, what it makes me feel and what it makes other people feel and kind of... Uh, I'm on the way, I'm figuring out how to make it happen and I get excited. Um, like this top, I made it like three days ago, I came up with this top and I'm like, oh my God, yeah, it could be this best, that layering and then I start making and then I start trying on and then I'm going and like go to the mirror, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the mirror, <laughs> uh, and it's just like, and then I created something. It's just the the 
the whole process that it comes from your idea, like you have yeah. your idea, like, oh my God, I want to make something and then you start making it and you made it. And it's just amazing how that's your way of communicating with the world. Correct. And that's funny because every, everyone, every person that is creative, I consider myself very creative. From the young age, I was always telling stories and writing and my dad used to have one of those big cameras in the 80s that you had like to actually put on your shoulder to film mm -hmm. and I used to steal his camera when he was at work I knew the code of the, the thing and I was doing movies and everything and um, I used to have a recorder and I would tell stories on my recorder and for me that was my way to express myself some people express themselves with food, some people express and sound with painting. And it's funny because my handwriting is terrible. Mm -hmm. I cannot draw anything mm -hmm. for a million dollars. Okay. Nothing. nothing. But and in you the tried, other you hand, tried. You in tried. terms of creativity in creating stories and uh -huh. telling stories, I think that's where my 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 art comes. Yeah. It's uh, like a different medium. Express, medium exactly. Medium, I love you know, to write. Yeah. I've been writing I start writing again like two years ago, like journals and stuff. And that's where I can express myself and that's where I feel confident and I think it's, it's, it's nice. Yeah, that I, I also, when, every time that I, when I'm cooking or creating some recipes, I always add something new. Because having my clients and when I do, you know, this kind of interviews and stuff, and I say, well, let me try next time adding new stuff. Mm -hmm. and that's the way I think you always keep up, you know, with the, the level of creativity mm -hmm. that you're giving to your people. If not, I think, first of all, I wasn't be here, but the second of all, it wasn't be me. You know, I always trying to reinvent myself, as you said, it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really hard sometimes when you get stuck in your life and you are in such a comfort zone that you think, okay, now what I'm going to do is just be here in the yeah. couch. No way, I have and to do, do the something same thing new. Yeah, do the same yeah, no. no, 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 let's do something new. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do, you know, as a, as a motive or motivation for myself. Yeah. So that's the way. As, as we was, were taught this, has something to do with what we were talking before recording, like uh, you were here for 13 years, I'm here for six, Hamlet is here for a while also, and we don't feel the same person that we were when yeah. we were back in our country. Right. Yeah. So, and, and, and that's the thing about being always trying to be different. And Mari asked me, do you think that you are, um, you have a lower tone in some things or you're better? I don't know if I'm better, I know that I'm different. Yeah. How was that transition for you from, uh, number one, why you decided to leave Russia? And how was that transition here to America? Well, I didn't decide, basically it's my parents who decided oh, to okay. move. So I was 21 when I moved and uh, yeah, like you said, it was like opposite from opposite worlds, opposite cultures, languages. Um, Did you struggle to adapt? I think, or you didn't try to adapt? Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, of course I struggle, like I think it's uh, like you come from something else, you have your life, you, the, the, the culture, the language, and then you come to something else completely and right. it's so, so different, especially Miami. But I have another thought also because I think Latin cultures and Russians are similar in a way. Um, so yeah, my, really? my, my yeah. yeah. I was speaking this yeah, exactly. Yeah, really? Yeah, really? Please, I will, I will make my point because it's like, it's really because, especially in Miami, because there's so much. Don't Latin tell me influence. that you're always late when you're going yeah. because that's very Latino. <laughs> no, I was here okay. right on time. Okay, I was really perfect. early. I was like, I was like very Japanese of me. Okay. Um, so of course I struggled the English. I could like, I couldn't understand how of the words and I was started going to school right away so it was a lot of culture adaptation um, and I was crying probably for first year I don't like it I want to go somewhere da, da, da. Um, but little by little you know you get you have friends you I started working um, do, you, do you think that this struggle of not understanding the word, words or having a lot of friends helped you to dive in the creativity or the creative side? I think it helped me more to develop as a person to become stronger because I had to figure out things and right. in foreign countries especially. So it's like I can figure out basically any task in my life. I'm not afraid of anything. I can move now. I know that I can move to the moon and I'll make it myself comfortable there. Right. Um, okay. And I think that's a very important quality for a creative person because 
besides creativity, it's amazing. There are so many talented people in the world, but you have to have that discipline, that strong, um, how you that's, say? That's the thing about a creative person, because they are creative, period. Yeah. Doesn't right. matter where. Yeah, that's true. You put a creative person in the desert, they are going to figure out how to take water from a coconut. Exactly, yes. yeah. You, you get a person that is not creative, they will struggle more because they are only going to do that out of necessity. Like, yeah. okay, I need inside of the more. box. Like, like, I'm going yeah. to search for things. So they yeah. feel. For you, was, we are Latinos. Like, okay. so Miami is not so <laughs> yeah, different. Is, yeah, exactly, exactly. There's a lot of things that are different from Brazil. Yeah. But how was your adaptation? And where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Venezuela. Venezuela. I grew up. I mean, I born in Venezuela, but I grew up here in Miami. I have been coming with my family since 1986 okay. and the whole process was easy I will say my adaptation it wasn't that bad I didn't struggle that that much because I was very pro-American you know my brain was I mean from a young age it was set up to like the American format yeah. I'm very square in certain things I'm not like I'm trying to fix the, you know, getting late to the place, but I'm doing it. I'm doing better. <laughs> but it's more than you know, my set of mind. Not today. Not today. Not my today. Set, <laughs> no, but uh, today was the traffic. I wasn't around looking for sure. parking. No, but that's my, no, yeah, yeah. No, but I'm very like square in my the, the formalities. I, I like a lot of things of this system, that yeah. this society. So for me, it wasn't that bad. Even I, I could say that. I wasn't bullied in my country, but I had a lot of conflict every time that I was going back to Venezuela because I wasn't advanced. Yeah. You know, as a human being, as a you know, as a young man, even at the college when I was at college, you know, I, I really wasn't speaking English. It's, it's very hard people to to get you know English education over there. Right now, it's out of the every single um, schedule of program in the college and you know in the high school there is no english which is pretty sad yeah all people around the world are, they're basically in the school they're having they're getting english and learning english so for me was the conflict was over there it wasn't here so i i, I really i pretty adapt easy so but let's go back to the <laughs> recipe let's go, let's go. because this Two tuna have absorbed everything now what i see amazing yeah, yeah, yeah i don't have smell so good Listen, what you're going to do at home, you're going to cut some onion, red onion in brunoise, okay. which okay. is a very, very small dice. You're going to okay. add it into the mix. So let me get and cilantro, which Russians I love, love it. cilantro too. You really? Oh my God, the Russians love a lot of like all these greens, the greens flavors and, stuff, and onions. And, like, so you're now you're one of my fans. <laughs> so yes. People that say they, they, they are, oh, I can't cook, it's because they don't try the spices yes. and the greens Correct. and the stuff. Correct. Because you can do, you can do an omelette with just egg, salt, and, and pepper, and it's one thing. You start adding other things, it's, you feel like you are having breakfast in a restaurant. Or you find Correct. friends who will cook for you, like me. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I, I'm always surrounded by That's people somehow. Thing that will make food for me. So being like, self, be self-aware, like you, the things that you don't know, if you, yeah. if, if you struggle to learn it. Right. There are some things in my brain that, they, that just don't enter, so I have people doing it. Right. You leave it to professionals. Correct. Look, this is the last ingredient, and this is in, at home, guys, or you're going to make at home, it's easy. Just add the spicy, this can be like chili paste. In this opportunity, I'm going to use rocoto, which is a pepper from Peru. It's no very, very spicy. That's why you just have. Just okay, I just had Luke. I don't know. Yeah, that means go to. Luke, <laughs> this is like Nothing. a tip of the uh, the teaspoon. So I'm gonna oh, add wow. it here, right here, just to have that kick. But it's up to you. That a lot of people like, you know, tuna tartar, like really, really, really spicy. Okay. Wow, this looks so after this, let's mix all this. I'm not even trying because I know that it's really good. <laughs> that's that's a level of confidence. Yeah. That, that's good. No, that's and important you know also. We're yeah. going to plate it this way. Let me use this spoon. We should use it. Let's plate it like this over here. I'm going to create like a dome. Beautiful. With the lettuce. With the lettuce, correct. Just as a base. Nice. Okay, so this one we want to try it later on. <laughs> this is for the show. Of course we're going to try it later on. <laughs> we we like, always oh. try, right, buddy? We always try. <laughs> and then we're going to add some of the 
cilantro, which is Mari, always... Mari, is, Mari is going to become like the oracle of the show because she's behind the camera and we, <laughs> we are knows. talking to her. Okay. She's, she's the oracle. She, <laughs> like she knows the everything. Mystery. She's the, the mystery. Thing. Everybody heard about her, but nobody saw her. Exactly. And her. Who is Mari? Who is Mari? Is she real? Mari is right here. Is she real? Yeah, and that's, that's mm. um, the Let final touch it. of cooking, like yes. the presentation. The presentation, I always try to put it like as standard as possible. There you go. Okay, let me just change it over here. Uh-uh, it's not getting. Hold on. And you guys at home, look and do it. One thing right that way. you said, Mohamed, that is very interesting. I've, I felt the same way in Brazil. I didn't come here at, until I was 20. I moved here at 29, uh, 32, actually. Wow, that's But I crazy. never, never is a strong word, but I didn't feel connected with our culture. So I always had that conflict. Uh, when I was um, eight, more or less, we started having cable TV in Brazil. And then I started to understand what was outside. So dude, there's yeah. so much things outside. Mm, so much more than I'm not saying that it's better or it's worse, it's just different. And I connect with that better than what I'm connecting with this year. We were talking, you asked me about carnival. I didn't like carnival. Like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm Brazilian, I don't like carnival. I don't what? like soccer, I don't like carnival. I'm a fake Brazilian, basically. It's like people asking like, you, you I'm love a fake Brazilian. You, That's like everyone. Vodka. you should like cold weather. But I'm like, why? Why should I like the exactly. things? Exactly. That's, yeah. That's why we change. That's why we change. Delicious. Just perfect. Okay, Just so perfect. we're going to try that later. You have a second. Do you want to try? You need to help us with the spoon. No, um, we are we are going to do both, and then we are trying them. But wait, why right the oracle before. gets us the, <laughs> the, the oracle? <laughs> yes, <laughs> right before you're gonna serve it, I just recommend you to drop a uh, some uh, lime dropping, on top. Dropping, 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 dropping some dropping like lime juice. Time. Like just touches, just touches, just touches. That's gonna be because you amazing. don't want to kill the other Correct. flavors. But it's gonna it's gonna like lift you up. And your palate. It's gonna give you that sensation as the spiciness, the fish sauce, the ponzu, the sesame, and then the citrus from the lime. It's gonna be yeah, You have a lot of flavors there. You have spice, Correct. you have uh, citric, you have the soy sauce, which is salty, you have the Cilantro. other thing that smelled a oh, little yeah. bit like sweet, so I yes. don't know if it's bitter sweet. Yes. And also, I brought something here. Let me just check it. That I yes, it's here. Okay. Sorry for that. No, it's fine. This is very good to add on. Oh, wow. Black which is sesame. black sesame oh. seed. And you can add it like this. Beautiful. It's gonna so it gives like a better. crunch, yeah, a little crunch. crunch. flavor, correct. There you go. Thank you. Go to your So Thank all you. yours, guys. Try it because I'm gonna clean this for the next recipe. Do you wanna try now or do you wanna try both together? Up to you. Up to you. Are you hungry now? No, no. let's try both Let's try together. later. So Okay, we leave it here we're gonna do like a degustation then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said something about the limes. Oh, how the to limes. pick up limes? Because the oracle <laughs> doesn't know how to pick up limes. I, I didn't, I didn't know how to pick up like limes either. This, this is something now even, even, even since I had the the cooking show on PBS in Spanish, people were sending me all sending me all these text messages and emails and questions. Like for example, when, what, what is the right pepper? How do you pick peppers at the supermarket? Uh, but especially this one was like the top question. Hey, question. Every time that I go to the supermarket, you know, I get, I want to buy limes and they're dry inside. Why they're dry? Because when you pick it, you, you're picking the wrong ones. Mm -hmm. Basically what you have to look, look Valeria, when they have this rough skin, mm -hmm. like the lime had acne, Something like that. Exactly. Don't yes, buy it. No. Don't buy it because they're dry inside and they're really hard. Just touch it. Yeah, okay. it's like let impossible. Show, impossible. Show yeah, show the camera. So they. But no. then in the opposite side, Daniel is going to show you. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This, this one. This one. Which Look how that's a bad one. This one, which is super rough. rough. Good one. Yes. Super rough is not a good one. Yeah. But good then one you one. have this like shiny silky soft and smooth texture of the line so when you're going to buy you have to check for this which is they're pretty juicy and they so are try. soft and they're soft this one had Correct. facial yeah. this one yeah, that facial. one has a facial this exactly a facial. <laughs> you just don't go too soft because it might be like um a uh, rotten inside yeah sometimes yeah. if it's yeah. too this super soft too soft and also don't buy 
limes that they already had the color, the color areas like yellowish okay. or brownish. Wow, that's They're like wrong the art, yeah. art of choosing limes. Yeah, there so it's basically art. that. There should be a book. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like well, it's, it's, it makes a difference. Things, yeah. To try to do a carpinha with this one, you're going to have... What is like carpinha? Fi, carpinha is a Brazilian drink. You don't know carpinha? No. Oh, you have to try. <laughs> that's amazing. You know what? There's, know. A, there's a new uh, <laughs> brand of uh, Brazilian cachaça here in, in the United States called Beast. Explain what is cachaça. Cachaça is a Brazilian rum. It's like right. a rum. Okay, okay. It's made from uh, sugar cane. And with so the limes, it has limes? No, it, the, it's just a rum. The caipirinha has limes, uh, which is lime, uh, sugar, and cachaça. But there is this brand that is they are exporting here to US, and I'm not paid to, to say that. It's called Cachaça B, just the letter B. Okay. And they have a cachaça with honey. Oof. And it's dangerously good. good. Okay. Because you drink it with no ice, with anything, and it's just, just like, like that? perfect. It's wow. You don't feel anything. So back here, what we're going to do with the second okay. dish. We want to do the ceviche. The ceviche that there is a traditional way to do it, but obviously for me and always I follow, I have been in Peru many, many times, you have to create a cold bowl, mm -hmm. okay? And that's basically add ice in one of the silver or metallic bowls, and then you can use a crystal one or another metallic bowl, and then put it inside, okay? okay? To create all the walls like the same temperature, okay? This is gonna be key. Meanwhile, we're mixing, you know, the fish, the lime, and all the stuff. So, meanwhile, because I know you have a lot of questions for Valeria, I'm going to cook the corvina. The corvina we want to cut and dice as well. Very thin, like, I would say like one centimeter, because you need to have like pieces that are comfortable enough to have it in your palate. Don't cut like big chunk pieces of fish, because yeah, it's, it, it's not good. You need, you really need to feel the delicacy of the fish, mm -hmm. all the flavor, especially with this recipe with the coconut sauce. So, so let's start wow. cooking, let's start cutting. And what was the question for Valeria? Valeria. <laughs> you guys are like two professionals. Like what I want to ask you is, um, we know art is a difficult business. It's not it everybody is, yeah. that is an artist, that, yeah. the, an artist that fortunately can live out of that. Mm -hmm. How was that for you? How, how, and how, and what can you give, what kind of advice you can give to young artists that they don't want to have a second job to sustain the art, but they want to live from it? Well, yeah, well, I'm, I think I'm still figuring out it every day as I do, so even though I have... Pay your bills, <laughs> your <laughs> No, because I'm, I'm uh, on my own for, I've been for five years on my own, right? Uh, because before I was working, which I think uh, it's a great experience too for a young professional when you graduate to have that experience working for someone because now in my business I use all the skills literally from packing from packaging to going to the UPS like every, all the logistics I know how to do right and I learn every day um, and but of course yeah how to how to monetize your talent and I think the answer is like we talked before, first of all, loving what you do, because only with the persistence and you have to put a lot of work, you know, and you cannot give up. And because there are things and so, and everything just has timing and you never know when it's gonna happen. So you just have to do it and keep doing what you love because few people feel it too, you know, when you have this, um, I don't know, light inside of you, that you're doing it. Um, of course, everybody wants to make money and live a good life, but the motivation, I think, should be the in the in the word of art or creation. You know, you do it because you love it first, not because like, oh no, I'm. How do I make money? You went to college, right, for fashion. I went to, yeah, I studied in Moscow for five years. Then I came here. I graduated from school here in Miami. Uh, so Which was, one? Allow me to ask you. The art university. Nice, very good. So it was total eight years of school, and then in between I went to the British school. So it was yeah eight years of professional schooling. I'm I in Brazil I was a university professor, but my concept of university and college have changed a lot. And what I want to ask you is two things out of college. Um, the knowledge that you gained there, do you think it was 
super valuable for you in terms of learning new things or just condensing things and structuring and number two how important is a degree in that field like having a degree because i feel like in a lot of professions yeah. uh, like in my own i'm an economist there's yeah. nothing that i teach my 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 students that they cannot learn from themselves yeah they can sit down and just read the books and learn about yeah, the economy yeah uh, but google how to but <laughs> how to become economist but they need still need a degree yeah. and on art how, how is that how how valuable was college in terms of knowledge yeah. for you yeah. and how valuable was your degree yeah. entering in the workforce or working in that field well to answer first question i had uh, i was lucky enough to experience both uh, countries and i had my degree in russia and i had my degree in the states so in moscow we have amazing artistic school the base and that was more like they taught us how to draw um, it was like five years of drawing non-stop and I now I'm using it I didn't know that I'm gonna be using it but now I, I know so artistically it was amazing school and uh, I learned I had the tools so now I have the tools that taught me how to use it um, in the States I think because I already knew how to draw how to sew how to be creative so in the States I think I learned more of a structure and the business uh, and the discipline. I think what most important thing that schools teaches you is to be disciplined because that's the the yes. key being entrepreneur and having your own business. You know, you have to be disciplined. You have to wake up every morning. You have to do. You have to do the, to plan your days, what to do, and that I think is the most valuable um, thing that school teaches you, right? Right. And um, yeah, and the the did the, the degree help me to get into the industry? Um, I think my skills helped me to get into the industry, which the school gave me and me being creative on my own and exploring. I don't think necessary people look like, oh, what school, particularly in art. In, nice. Yeah, because people look at your portfolio at the end of the day. And nobody goes like... Exactly, that's yeah. my question, because in my field, yeah. I'm, a, yeah. I'm an economist by yeah. formation. And let's say I'm going to apply for a job as an um, asset manager. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that invest, that are doctors, that they're lawyers, yeah. that didn't go to yes. economic schools. Yeah. And, and they are good. far way better than a lot of people that went to school. Yeah. And, but when there's the job description, there's a requirement. Yes. Yeah. Graduated a yeah. degree in economics. But the guy is a doctor and he went to medicine school, didn't like it, he started investing, now he's very good on that. So I think sometimes at the age that we are living right now, um, and that is, was something I used to tell my students don't let the university um, mess up with your studies. Totally. Right. Because if yeah. you are good at something and you want to study that, sometimes university is going to push you to the other side. And Correct. agreeing that fact can restrain a lot of people to move forward because, oh, I'm a very good investor, manager, investment manager, but I don't have a degree, so I don't have a job. Right. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes it's that, that situation. I think the diplomas and and getting a degree is a validation of something that you did, but sometimes it's not what you are passionate about to do. You know, like for example, now like when I listen to her, it's like she's passionate about, passionate about what she's doing right now and love it. So it doesn't matter, yeah. obviously you get a degree in, in, in that career, but it, that's like another level of for fascination her, for, her, for, her, for, for, me, for you, you, the degree has no value, no value for you correct. personally because yeah. you love the arts yeah. anyway. Yeah. For yeah. others, could be a validation of something what they did, but as you said, maybe they're successful, you know, in other fields. So sometimes I agree with you, and you know what you're saying about you know what's the university. I think the really university is the university of life yeah. because yeah, that's where you really yeah. learn what you love. I mean all these opportunities that you get in this road that we call life. I mean, if you don't take it sometimes, you lose. Or you, as we said in my country, we, you lost the bus. You yeah. know? Sometimes that bus passes in front of you and you're like, no, this is not for me. Mm. And then you're stuck in your life in certain situation. That's when, once again, going to the reinvention, you have to do something. Exactly. Because you have something to live off and something to be, you know, in a better standard of life. 
okay? So, well, go back to the recipe. Cool. Amazing. What I did, I just cut the, the fish. This fish is Corvina, the, the, which is, I really recommend it because it's, it's a very soft and consistent white fish. It's in the family of the sea bass. So, mm -hmm. but don't ask for sea bass because ceviche with sea bass is terrible, okay? okay? So, ask for Corvina, Corvina. okay? Corvina. I already cut it, it's done. What we want to do now is the famous chemical reaction that it cooked is going to cook the fish. Mm -hmm. It's basically adding lemon juice, okay? Pull it now just to cover it a little bit. I didn't squeeze a lime. Then I want me to squeeze a lime. I'm gonna squeeze the lime. Squeeze the lime, bro. Okay. Lime. Squeezing lime. I'm squeezing lime. I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna do it, Daniel. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Do it for the gram. Do it yeah, for the gram. Correct. So let's create that reaction. Okay. So the lime cooks the fish. Yes, but not the lime by itself. That's another thing. Let me just this. Let me clean this pretty quick. I'm just waiting for the coconut oil. Yes, coconut. Coconut. mix it, yeah. but the reaction is going to start as soon as I add the salt, okay? okay? And this process is going to take, let's say, five minutes, and it's going to start turning the fish from that color, what, um, you know, whitish color to a really white, pure mm. white color, okay? So let's add a little bit more salt and mix it up, okay? If we need to add more salt, we're going to taste it later on when I add the coconut and the stuff. But look, it's automatically. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Always it's already changing colors. It is already changing color. Look. Amazing. See over wow. here. Look. This camera over there. <laughs> and this liquid basically is going to turn like full white. It's called tiger tears oh, or yeah. tiger milk. Okay, you can call it that both ways. Okay, in Thailand they call it tears, in Peru they call it tiger mm -hmm. milk. Okay, leche de tigre, which is very, very good. Look at how it's changing. How okay. do you say tiger milk in Russian? Uh, Malako tigre. I my cast <laughs> tigre. I think it's, it's sexy. Tigre, yeah, tigre. It's tigre. very sexy. <laughs> it's going to be my next language I was telling you. Second half next, next year, I'm going to start learning Russian. Maybe I should learn Portuguese. I'm another ingredient, ingredient. another ingredient, important. You're going to cut red onion again, but this time in julienne, okay? Julienne, which is very, 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 very thin uh, layers of red onion. Why at this point? Because meanwhile, the lemon and the salt is cooking the fish. Also, the onion is going to spring its flavor into the mix, mm -hmm. okay? So that's very important to have that uh, onion flavor and at this point, right before to add the coconut milk. And the this is gonna be tea. delicious. Look how it's getting dry. Wow. Because the fish is absorbing. Absorbing the... Yes, wow. I need to move it a little bit more. Okay, let's set it. And now, let's over here. Okay, once again, we're going to use the Rocoto. The Rocoto, by the way, I, I use this brand. I wanted to have the real Rocoto. But, I'm sorry, but you can buy it in the supermarket. This is important ingredient from any kind of ceviche you make at home. If not, it's going to be just don't put pepper, don't put mm -hmm. chili paste. No, it has to be rocoto. It's very, very important. Or ají limo. Yes, just like caipirinha with vodka. That's not caipirinha. <laughs> like a lot of Correct. people do caipirinha with vodka. Correct. No, that's no. No. That's a no. Okay, let me just mix it again. We okay. should have some cocktails. Yeah, we okay. should. <laughs> okay, at this point. And obviously, the last thing that we're going to add is the coconut milk and the cilantro. It has to be in that order. Okay, once again, reaction, lemon and salt, then add the red onion and julienne. Then we're going to add the coconut milk right now. Meanwhile, you guys are talking and I'm going to start cutting the cilantro. Um, Valeria, NFTs and electronic and digital arts, are you into that? I, I saw um, uh, the, the, your art for Frenchie and I'm really already like connecting with the NFTs. Have you yes. thought about that? I definitely thought about it. I suppose talking to a few people because me being an artist my brain does not go <laughs> there i mean yeah, yeah. all my art turn out. <laughs> yeah all my art is digital which is amazing because i already have this platform and i do animations as well 
Uh, so eventually, I think this year, that's what I would like to work on the collection of um, NFTs. And I'm trying to understand more because they explain like, okay, you can do because um, a lot of brands they're launching like thousands of them mm -hmm. um, and another one they like there's so many different nuances yeah, that I'm things. trying to understand and I think that's the future honestly because everything eventually is going to be digital and computerized you know you have these galleries on your screens and like I mean all of us you know the watches and phones so that's definitely something interesting too and it's amazing how it's developed but literally exactly. overnight like well, it's there for a while, but I think got not to writing overnight. Yeah. Like um, at some point, someone said, "Okay, let's put it there," and yeah. they start doing. And you would also work with the design district, right, to do the breast cancer awareness um, um, art for them. Yes. How we, was that work? How well, how it came? It was amazing. I did already. It was my third year in the role, and because I knew them, and my friend Angela, she um, she has this foundation, uh, the Fashion Strike Cancer. So, and when they needed the visuals, the invitations, so I was starting doing fine Frenchie, and that's how we started. They love the character, so the character kind of became the ambassador for that month for Design wow, District. Wow, nice, very nice. So now, yeah, everybody recognized her. We did, I, I, I did um, design the t-shirts, we did the invitations, we raised the money. It was amazing, amazing. And now more people recognize do you the brand. Do, have you thought about connecting fine French with that on the NFT? Um, no, I have not. Because the NFT... <laughs> That's a good the, the, point. Because the NFT, um, some of the NFTs, the ones that I think that are going to prosper, they have a community behind it, they have a, a, a purpose behind it. Yeah. When they are just launching the art graphics, with the, yeah. graphics and that's what i heard it has to have a story i mean the character itself has a story because um fine french is this girl who wants to make you feel good something you know she has this sassy attitude and people look at her and first what and they it's based on your french based on my friends they look at her and they like they start laughing like oh my god that's me even people who doesn't have a dog or Frenchy, they look and like they can recognize part of them in that character and it makes it connects to the heart because I think that's one of the biggest thing on, on on the NFT the smart contracts everything's going to be like that that you can attach a portion of the transactions of that NFT in, into per, per, perpetuity I bought it I sold to him he yeah. sold to Mari Mari sold to someone and always can be like a fraction of it that is converted for example for that cause the, yeah. the, the, the breast cancer awareness yeah, cause definitely. so that's why I, why I thought since you were already doing both things you could uh, think about connecting them and that right. could be the su success of your yeah. NFT uh, uh, alongside with your art. So that's, totally uh, agree. Totally yeah, that's thank a you. Of people, that's a good idea, guys. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I, I have a, this girl from Brazil, she's living here now mm -hmm. and she's doing a couple of projects mm -hmm. on that. I'm going to put yeah, you in contact I will, with honestly, her. I yeah. think it's going to be nice. Because if I want to do it, I want to do it, um, I don't want to rush, I want to do it nice because I want to present nice concept as well, you know, and everything takes time, you know, if you want to do quality yeah. work, we all know, you yeah, know, it right. just takes time, you have to put time and that's what um, I would like to do, definitely. Perfect. Well, now it's time to add the my, my favorite email, yeah, favorite. which Daniel had been waiting, I don't know, maybe three yeah. minutes. <laughs> so yeah, we want to add it. And this, at the same time, is going to neutralize the spiciness. So that's why you at home, guys, if you like the spicy, do it a lot because the coconut is going to block it. But in this case, you're going to feel the kick of the spice. That's it. So, and let's mix it again. That's super nice. Yes, let's mix it. It has a great color. It's going to try. And I feel like you fire. put coconut in anything, it becomes <laughs> automatically good. Good. Yes. I and, love and coconut. Anything. Like, um, I don't know if you have that in Venezuela, the milk flans. Yeah, of course. My mom used to do yeah. that. I would grab the, the coconut, uh, the shavings, and I'll put it there. Yeah. And for yeah. me, it's perfect. Delicious. And then let's add cilantro to your taste. So the coconut for me, the cilantro for yeah. the Russians. Yeah. 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 You got everything. Okay. Everyone, Perfect. everybody's happy. Yeah, yeah, everybody's happy. This is beautiful. The colors, the context, the texture. So let me just mix it properly in. Look, when they start, like, really good. Yeah. When they start bubbling, that's also part of the chemical reaction, okay? So it's ready to be served. 
Let me just grab a piece that I need to taste. Maybe I'm gonna do it in a very rough way. This is like live. So <laughs> this is almost live because hey, there's oh, no yeah. cut. Oh my god, it's so good. Add a little bit of kick of this. Boom. And I definitely think it makes a little bit. Yeah, because you need to feel it. Yeah, yeah, and, and the, the coconut flavor. milk uh, um, neutralizes a little bit the, yes. the, 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 yeah. the, the spice in this spice. Is that a pepper? What pepper? Is the that is it made of pepper? Yeah, it's a, the rocotto, it's a pepper. It's a family of the cais, cais, in Spanish is caicinias. So all the, all the peppers contain caicicina, which is basically the spicy mm -hmm. things but in different grades. Mm -hmm. That's why green peppers and red peppers, they're not spicy at all because they have the caicina very, very, very low. This one has the highest level of that. But also at the same time, it's, a, it's an antioxidant. So Rocotto is famous for that. We're ready to serve. Oh, wow. As and then in this. Mari, can we have a drink of this? <laughs> when 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 you yay huh? wow this looks when amazing when you when you ask on camera there's no way she will say no <laughs> look at this oh, of course i'm not cutting it no 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 we're going all wow natural. yeah no photoshop that, that no looks anything. amazing no and the sauce is just delicious of course. <laughs> Santa is opening the bottle. Wait, uh, I need the glasses. Wow, I need to well, do something. I need to do something in this cooking show. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna serve. Mari, don't forget to help us with the, a couple of forks. Or the spoon. forks are here. Oh, okay. oh yeah, we got wow. it. The Oracle right. got it. Oracle got it. Oracle. She's always yes. one step ahead. <laughs> and I wanna use this opportunity to thank Delano once again for letting us use this amazing Beautiful. kitchen that they are doing. Oh, yeah. We are going to do a break in our recordings because they are renovating the stores. They are getting, uh, they are putting another collection of kitchens and probably we are going to get back in February, right? So in February, in a new kitchen. Ooh. New grand kitchen. Maybe we have two kitchens. I'm gonna, right? I'm gonna call oh my, my producer God. and we can talk. Because this is like super hard. Now I'm ready, money. <laughs> it's a cool little bit. The bloopers. <laughs> Those are the best. One, two, three, go. Woo! Oh, woo there you go. Well, you have two delicious things here, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have one. First, Thank Valeria. You. Then our chef. <laughs> This is so nice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And this is for me. And another one for the Oracle. For the Oracle. Oracle. I want to see her cannot. come and get it in front of the camera. <laughs> no, let's keep Oracle. Maddie as, as, as our Yeah, the mystery, mystery the mystery, the mystery <laughs> So, woman. okay, Valeria, please. Valeria. Ladies try first. Ladies first. Show. Try the, um, what should I do first? Try? Uh, up to you. Uh, Let's go for the Yeah, this first. one is like, okay, we like, wow, what an honor. Thank you so much. I hope you like I it. That's it. delicious. It should be at this time, like, you know, a little bit colder, mm. but the temperature is going to be fine. Sir? Mm, so good. So, so good. The texture. I mean, I'm going to try it. You Excuse me, but, you know. <laughs> Dude, and, and I, Mari knows that, and I don't like sushi and you raw don't? fish and stuff, really? but this is, no, it's very good. I'm changing my mind. You already absorbed the whole thing. You don't, Let me tell it, you. it doesn't feel fishy, it doesn't, the texture oh, no. is super good. Completely. But that's because the sesame oil, very important, remember, to use the sesame oil. In the, the problem is that you don't, it's not that you don't like some kind of food, it's like the way that it's prepared. Mm. The spicy, yeah. you feel that? It's so nice, yeah. 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 Try this one, please. Just so again. Nice. <laughs> All the way down with the onions and everything. There you go. So good. I think I'm going to drink this one. Yeah. <laughs> with, with the coconut stuff. Wow, it's really, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have like this coconut, no, texture, coconut, and, like it doesn't, it's very subtle and... Let's try. 
How's the salt? Because I didn't try this, the, the, the point of salt. It's, for me, it's perfect. Even mm. this... <coughs> sorry. I mean, even the spice on this one... It's good. I this, can yeah, feel yeah, it yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, so beautiful, beautiful, perfect. beautiful. Perfect. So good. Perfect. Valeria, <laughs> thank you very much for coming. Mm -hmm. Hamlet, My thank pleasure. you very much for being a part of this also. And Mari, thank you very much for putting it all together once awesome. again. Thank you and so cheers. much for cheers. having us. And cheers, the thank you. Happy holidays. Yay. Happy holidays. Happy it's holiday holidays. season and happy birthday to me, January 4th. <laughs> Hit me up, send me gifts. I deserve it. And what? Her birthday too? Her birthday oh, today! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cheers for that. Help. Cheers. How do you say happy success. birthday in Russian? С днем рождения. Is it not? Good. Wow, that's good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.